we know, for example, that uh, fair value accounting is coming, but it's not here yet. You've got to wait, you know, some some number of months. And we know that uh, spot Bitcoin ETF is highly likely to be coming. We're in this in between period, which, in my opinion, is the best time to be. It's like, you know, the future. <laughs> No one else can act on it. If you if you have a crypto account with a crypto exchange, you're able uh, to buy Bitcoin right now. It seems like it's a no brainer that this is a point where the risk reward uh, equation has really shifted. It's the least risk I've seen in three years with the mm -hmm. highest upside. Michael Saylor is the founder, former chief executive officer and executive chairman of MicroStrategy, a Virginia based firm that provides business intelligence mobile software and cloud-based services. The software and business analytics firm currently holds approximately 152,800 Bitcoin in its balance sheet, the most for any publicly traded company in the world. In addition to being a renowned entrepreneur and billionaire business executive, Saylor is a huge Bitcoin advocate and firmly believes in the supremacy of the leading crypto asset. He believes Bitcoin now has the best risk-reward ratio since his firm started investing in 2020. During a recent discussion with crypto banter's Rand Nooner, Saylor highlights three important events he's looking forward to in the coming months. According to the renowned business executive, these events will be the main drivers of the next crypto bull market, during which we can finally see a new all-time high for the leading crypto asset. The events are the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, the introduction of fair accounting principles for cryptocurrencies by the U.S. Financial Accounting Standards Board, FASB, and the 2024 halving. Each of these events holds a lot of weight by itself. However, Saylor says the possibilities become endless when they are combined. Last week, the Accounting Standards Board unanimously voted in favor of fair value accounting for crypto assets held on corporate balance sheets. Currently, the board only allows companies to report price gains in the value of their digital assets when they sell them, though losses are reported at least annually. But with the new rule change, the board will allow companies to show gains and losses on crypto holdings immediately in their income statements. Staler, who had been pushing for the rule change for years, celebrated the victory with a post on X. The post reads, Fair value accounting is coming to Bitcoin. This upgrade to FASB accounting rules eliminates a major impediment to corporate adoption of Bitcoin as a treasury asset. Another event that Saylor believes will make Bitcoin more attractive to institutional investors is the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF applications before the SEC. Saylor says that with Grayscale having the full backing of the judiciary to cover the GBTC trust to a spot ETF, the SECC will be forced to approve the conversion. He adds that there is a very high chance that the regulator will approve other spot Bitcoin ETF sometime between now and the first quarter of 2024, which will just be in time for the 2024 halving. We will now bring you clips from Saylor's interview as he discusses just how much of a good bargain Bitcoin is at current prices. But before we do, please take a little time to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. We would also love you to join the conversation by dropping your comments and observations in the comments section below. Everything helps with the YouTube algorithm and contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks and enjoy the video. I'm highly confident it'll get approved. I think at this point, what we've seen is the FASB, uh, the FASB adoption of fair value accounting is a big endorsement of the accounting profession of this asset class. Um, I think the, the court system ruling in favor of Grayscale, I think that's a big endorsement from, uh, from uh, the legal branch of government of the asset class. I think we already know that in Congress and Senate, there are lots of fans that support the asset class. And I think even in the CFTC and two SEC chairs have all said that this is a commodity, this is a legitimate asset class. So, so I, I think that we have a consensus that's building and I think the pressure is now building. So I think the real question is just, uh, will, will a spot e ETF be approved in Q4? Or will it be a, approved in Q1? If, I, if you so, had to handicap it, I would say, I agree. You know, you, you kind of go with a 75% likelihood. There's a 25% likelihood that some other crazy thing happens in the future. We don't know. But it definitely seems you'll have multiple spot ETFs approved based upon the fact pattern we see in front of us right now. Uh, it's just important to note that the people with all the money 
are the hedge funds on Wall Street that are doing business with the wirehouses and they're trading in equities and Apple and Google and Facebook and the ETF. So, so they're the ones that, that will actually move the needle. And even though we know the future, like we know, for example, that uh, fair value accounting is coming, but it's not here yet. You've got to wait, you know, some, some number of months. And we know that uh, spot Bitcoin ETF is highly likely to be coming, but there's a big difference between knowing something is going to happen and being able to pick up the phone and call your broker and buy $50 million worth of it. Right. So a, we're, a, we're at that stage where we know it's coming, but um, we really haven't plugged wall street into the asset. What happens is once you've cured the structural deficiency, the discount will go away and then there's no uh, incentive to sell the Bitcoin. The people that are in the space wanted to own the Bitcoin. They didn't want to sell it. So, so I think, I think there'll be like a there'll be a short a, a very very quick short term adjustment maybe a jolt sometimes you know sometimes in uh, the crypto markets there's this panic that lasts for like an hour or sometimes for a day and then people all go oh what did I do that was stupid like when Jerome Powell starts talking uh, you know about interest rates and then the price crashes and then the price soars and then it comes back in. So I think there might be a little bit of uh, adjustment, but at the end of the day, securing the structural deficiency will cause the discount to go away. So that's that's what I think on that. With regard to the other spot ETFs, I think it's highly likely they all get approved at the same time. And and you know, if not at the same time, if not like in the same press release, in the same week. I don't I don't think that you'll see grayscale approved and none of, and all the other spots delayed the sec has enough um enough tools at their disposal that they can manage the sequencing of all these things to either approve everything or delay everything or slow something down and speed something up so i, I i'm as you could probably guess i actually think the future is good for bitcoin <laughs> Saylor believes Bitcoin is currently at the best bargain, not just because prices are so low, but because of the massive upsides he believes we would see next year. He argues that with the spot ETF approval and the FASB rule change, Bitcoin, which has prior to this been a very controversial topic in boardrooms, will now be more freely discussed and considered. According to the MicroStrategy executive chairman, this is the big moment for Bitcoin, the big moment everyone has been waiting for since at least 2021. Ex-fund manager and macro analyst James Lavish nicely summed up the problem and why the new rule change is such a big deal in a post from November. It reads, Most companies are widely held and not controlled by one majority holder, unlike Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy. The career risk for those in charge is just too great for them to dive in and allocate their treasury cash to Bitcoin in lieu of straight cash or U.S. treasuries. According to reports, the board is expected to formally approve final language later this year and companies would then be free to adopt the new standards. Let's get back to the interview as Saylor discusses Twitter FUD and the coming halving event. There's never ending number of people on Twitter that come up with scenarios for me, figure out why you would, but, but they keep coming up with them and it's always, you know, it's always some crypto FUD, right? This exchange might melt down. That stable coin might melt down. Maybe the regulators will do this. Maybe GBTC will crash. But I don't, I don't think any of those things are anything more than maybe they scare you for an hour or a day. But, uh, uh, but if, if my holding time was a year, if my holding time's a year, then I would just ignore all the noise. And of course, my holding time's more than a decade. So I just, I think there's only three things that are relevant right now right and here are the three things the having is coming with a hundred percent certainty and as far as i can see most of the selling of bitcoin in the market is the bitcoin miners that have to sell in order to pay their electricity bills and pay their cat their their debt expenses and their operating expenses so that amount of selling pressure is going to be cut in half in a few months so we know that's coming and then we know there's a spot Bitcoin ETF coming. And when that comes, we plug into Wall Street and the entire banking system. And then finally, we know that fair value accounting is coming. And when that happens, the objection will go away. And now you're going to introduce this as a conversation into hundreds of boardrooms. They will not move in a week 
they they move quarterly, but over the course of 12 quarters, you know, you'll start to see uh, company after company looking at this, and you'll start to see a reallocation of assets, right? At the end so of the day, corporations only hold two assets. They hold cash and they hold bonds. And so if Bitcoin is available as an asset, a uh, pair of to a bond, then you'll see a reallocation from bonds to Bitcoin. And then in the institutional investor side, you've got all these people holding real estate, holding commodities, holding gold, holding ETFs and, and S&P indexes and the like. And if they start to reallocate, and they will, 1%, then 2%, then 5%, then you're going to have something that's never happened in the history of the world, which is you've got an ETF on a commodity that is scarce. Every other ETF in the world is on an asset that is, that is not scarce. It's inflationary. You can make more buildings. You can make more real estate. You can make more gold. You can make more commodities. You can make a billion dollars worth of any of those things the underlying producers produce more of the asset to, to deflate or to depreciate the price. With Bitcoin, when $100 billion flows into the Bitcoin spot ETF, there won't be any ability for any producer to produce any more Bitcoin. And so you, you can't really compare it to the spot uh, ETF of gold because gold is an inflationary asset and you can't, can't compare it to ETFs on real estate or on bonds or on equity, you really have to say, this is the first time we ever plugged Wall Street into an asset that you cannot produce any more of. And so nobody knows what will happen, except that if you reason from first principles, you know that it's got to actually perform better than all the other asset ETFs because the underlying fundamentals are just better. Several people under Saylor's post on the FASB fair value accounting rule change commented on the number of bullish news Bitcoin and the overall cryptocurrency industry have had over the past week. Despite the bear market and a major downturn in the U.S. economy, the leading cryptocurrency has continued to pique the interest of big money investors like BlackRock's Larry Fink. It has also surpassed the expectations of technical analysts like Gareth Soloway, who predicted Bitcoin's price would tumble below $10,000 per coin. Do you agree with Saylor that Bitcoin is currently at a ridiculous discount and everything is going to change rapidly in the coming months? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos. Thanks for watching.